Hello everyone, my name's Tom and I'm here to tell you about the Golden Realms, which is a new expansion for Age of Wonders 3. First, an introduction. With Golden Realms, we'll set sail to new lands where we'll face exotic monsters such as Nagas and Dread Monkeys. We'll find new locations and treasures. We'll rediscover the lost halfling race who compensate for their size with clever skills and magical luck. We'll tame the wild magic specialization, find new ways to upgrade our cities and use the seals of power to achieve victory. Golden Realms includes a three scenario campaign, standalone maps, and of course everything is used by the enhanced random map generator. Okay, so we've prepared a demo map for you here. We have here Ali Thistlewood, she's a halfling sorceress. She's who we're going to be controlling today. And along with the rest of the halflings, she's marooned in this sort of exotic faraway land. A number of years ago, the halflings were involved in something called the Hartwood Massacre, where a bunch of them were murdered by, I think, orcs and goblins trying to steal their magic and she's one of the few survivors. Now, halflings are like dwarves, only they don't have beards, so they're less hairy, and they're a little bit thinner. Well, mostly a little bit thinner. This is the halfling blue brew brother. He's the halfling priest unit. He specializes in giving people food and throwing cleavers at people. He's also, like all halflings, lucky. Now, what this means is, as long as his morale is high, he will be able to simply avoid attacks. There's a 15% chance that any attack on him, be it um, an arrow or a sword strike, will simply say, nope, doesn't happen, he's lucky, and it misses. However, like all halflings, he also has physical weakness. He's not a particularly sturdy chap, so if he's not lucky, he's in for a whole world of hurt. We also have, what else do we have here? We have the pony rider, we have the jester. The jester is the halfling archer equivalent. They shoot fireworks at people. Fireworks do a nice amount of damage, but the main thing that fireworks do is that they can dazzle nearby units, and dazzled units can't retaliate, and they can also panic nearby animals. So animals against archdrids, for example, this is quite devastating. The only danger of that is that the dazzle and the panic it does friendly fire, so you need to be a little bit careful with that. Okay, now what else have we got around here? It's like one of the new creatures. This is our feathered serpent, a sort of Quetzalcoatl-like, Aztec-inspired beast. Flies around, tier three, it's quite powerful. Has a healing powers and also damage, so it's sort of like a hybrid unit, hybrid role. And because we've captured this lost city, we've been able to build the Temple of the Eternal Serpent in our nearby city, and that means we can make these ourselves to boost our armies. Okay, so join up and head east to see what we can find. We've run into someone else. It's a halfling adventurer. This is the irregular unit of the halflings. He's got a slingshot. And he's owned by Carl Hushwick. Carl Hushwick is one of the characters from the campaign. Just like Ali is one of the characters from the campaign. You can see him here. Obviously quite an intimidating guy compared to young Ali. And even though we're not at war yet, we are already competing. There's a new mechanic called Empire Quests. And what this means is everyone shares the same set of quests and the first person to complete a quest gets a prize and everyone is told about it. So if I was to shoot ahead and research every single skill, every single player in the game would get a notice saying Ali Thistlewood has completed the all-knowing quest and I would receive two new specializations at random. So two new spheres of magic, say, which I'd never chosen at character creation, I'd now be able to research into those as well. Kind of neat. Other quests are things like Prime Evil, you get a group of evil units if you're the first person to achieve pure evil alignment. Or Paragon, the first person to build or summon a tier 4 unit. That unit will create, get a permanent bonus, so it's like special, the first of its kind. And house, next turn. So, one of the new sort of um, world map features is these um, Flowers of Solace. You pop onto those, quite useful for halflings. They make us immune to negative morale. And here we have the seal. Now, these are the new victory mechanic. They're gateways into an alternate dimension. An alternate dimension guarded by horrible puke monsters, monkeys, and glowing babies with crowns. Spirit elementals. And if we capture these and hold these, that means we can win the game. We can see that Carl has already captured one. He sat on a seal, and that seal is the seal of the Megaton, that's over here. This, the seal of Yinxus, is what we want to capture. What that means, each turn, Carl will get a point, and when we have one, we'll get a point too. And the first person to 35 points wins the game. They ascend to godhood through the power of the seals. So, let's go in there and um, begin our quest to divinity. 
And here we are, the seals are protected by powerful magic, the guardian of the seals. So every turn, blasts of energy are going to come down from the sky and hit us. So we're going to want to clear this as quickly as possible. Fortunately, our feathered serpent net is kind of tough, so it didn't take that much of a hit. <coughs> the vomit monster, the blight elemental, comes running towards us and pukes all over everything. And now the spirit elementals come along. Shoot laser bolts. Spirit blasts. And here come the monkeys. Thrown filth at our feathered serpent. That means our feathered serpent is covered in well, filth and is now giving off a disgusting stench. The disgusting stench means that it is disgusted by its own stench and is suffering a, a resistance penalty and a morale penalty. Now it's not that big a deal for the feathered serpent, but for the for anyone nearby, if I was to move a unit next to him, he would also be disgusted, and that could be quite bad because halflings need to have high morale. Anyhow. Let's give it a go. First we're going to cast a spell. Now, Ali uses a new sphere called Wild Magic. Wild Magic is also it's not tied to any particular element or type of damage. It uses all of the elements and lots of random effects. We're going to cast a spell called Spontaneous Mutation, which gives every single one of our units two random buffs. So, for example, now, what's just happened? Our Feathered Serpent has now gotten Spiked Hide and Swollen Muscles, which is absolutely perfect for melee creature. So it does plus five damage to anyone who hits him in melee and plus four melee damage when he goes to hit people so that should be useful and uh, first though we're going to use our jester our jester who is has a disgusting stench as well he's um mutated to start stinking so he's uh, managed to disgust it with himself just like the poor old serpent is and he's drenched with sweat which gives him fire resistance but makes him weak to electricity and ice anyway he's going to run forward he's going to shoot a firework at the monkeys. See if we can. Yep, they're panicked and dazzled, so the monkeys will run away next turn. And that makes it a bit easier for our feathered serpent to come in and strike. I think the blight elemental got damaged too, got well, dazzled, sorry, as well. That means he can't retaliate. Yep, we're good there. And so I just want to really kind of tie this guy down. He's probably the most dangerous monster here. Oh, crit. Criticals happen quite a lot with um, halflings because they constantly try and keep them happy all the time. And the pony riders can run over here and beat up the strange glowing baby monsters. Yep. And, and the Brew Brother. What's he going to do? Um, has anyone taken damage? What we can do with the Brew Brother is we can give Ali a nourishing meal. This will heal a couple of her hit points, but more importantly, it will give her plus 300 morale. Oh! You can see because he stood next to the stinking um, halfling jesters. They're also disgusted by the stench, so these Brew Brothers are absolutely very upset at the moment. Oh, because um, they also have the hormonal imbalance mutation, which means they're minus 400 uh, morale, so not all of the mutations you can get are good. Anyhow, but because they have low morale, that means they're lucky is now at 0%. Unhappy units have no luck, so the best way to counter halflings is to upset them. But anyway, next turn, see what happens. Whoa, blast of energy from the sky there. Spirit monsters, shoot. oh, and there goes Lucky. So that did absolutely nothing in this backstab. So you can see Lucky kept our poor car um, pony riders safe there one time. Now what are we gonna do? Let's beat up those monkeys. Oh, <laughs> need the monkeys are already dead. Handy. So send over the feathered serpent. Let's add move points. Ali, can you give a hand? George! Oh, she's got swollen muscles as well, so you just like tons of damage. Go on. Um, Halfling pony riders, once again, drenched with sweat, leaden bones, another mixed bag. You get some more defense, but you can't move as far because you're so heavy. Let's speed up the baby monster, down. Whoop, bang. It's ours. Okay, so now we have captured our very first seal. So, every turn we'll get a charge, and after 35 charges, we win the game. What we'd probably want to do is run over to the east with an army and kick Karl off his seal. Then we'll get two charges a turn and we're guaranteed to win. At the moment, it's going to be neck and neck. Also, this seal, every so often, was going to spawn a little army full of elementals that will attack us and try to take the seal back. So we're going to have to keep it guarded. Um, anyhow, looks like... A, oh, we lost a unit. Did someone die? Ooh. Oops, wasn't paying attention. I think um, the jester got eaten by the guardian of the seals town. So go back to our city, see if there's someone we can bring up to the front to help. 
Well, City will bring in the Eagle Rider. It's a tier 3 unit for the Halflings. One of the, the most powerful racial unit they have. It's not quite as um, tough as the Griffin Rider, which is very similar to, but it's much faster than the Griffin Rider. It's more of a sort of a high-speed skirmishing unit. We keep heading to the east. And anything else? Oh yes, one other thing. I s mentioned earlier that by capturing the lost city, we were able to build the Temple of the Elemental Serpent. The Eternal Serpent, even. There are actually a bunch of things like that. For example, if we were to capture this Forbidden Sanctum, we could get the Altar of Bound Souls. What that would mean is any support units built in the city with the Altar will get extra resistance, so they're harder to kill, and the Resurgence ability, so they're immortal, come back from the dead. We could also capture this sunken city, which would give us the Sanctuary of the Deep upgrade, which would allow us to build mermaids. And also sirens, which are like super mermaids with green and shout a lot. Okay, next turn. Oh, Carl's got some mermaids hanging out in the, in the water over there. Oh, some monkeys and, oh, and an elephant wandering around. Okay, move over to the east, and here we have the Nagas. Chat this guy. This is the glutton. It's a Naga super unit. An enormous, fat, terrifying monster who eats whole armies whole. So uh, we want to take his dwelling. He's in the Naga dwelling. We want to take that so that we can make our own Nagas. He's hanging out here. He's also with a Naga matriarch. Four arms, four swords, four, well, four of everything. And yeah, she can dominate inflict poison. I believe when she levels up, she can also throw lightning bolts at people. And so, yeah, let's move in. Quickly run over this pumpkin patch. Heals our units a little bit. And next turn, we'll be able to invade. What are you doing, Carl? This is mine. You can't keep it. Elephants are off. Okay. Going to war. Okay, so here we have the Naga dwelling. You can see the enormous snaky spires in the background and the valiant defenders against my rampant imperialism are on the hill, about to advance past the clutches of eggs, probably with their babies, who vomit all over me. Just like everyone else who vomits all over me in this game so far. Okay, so this is the most powerful unit that they have, the Glutton. 120 hit points, only 8 defense, but 15 resistance, which is huge. He also has this ability, Swallow Hole. Every time he does a melee attack, there's a chance that he's going to simply swallow the unit he's attacking and get some of his health back. So this is the biggest threat, and he's going to be the guy we want to deal with first. Now, Wild Magic has an awful lot of tactical spells in it. It's mainly focused on tactical combat spells. So we have Warp Equipment, for example, which debuffs all, uh, all enemies in a small area. Swap Locations, which lets us swap the location of an enemy with one of our units. And Unstable Transformation, my personal favourite. This transforms one of your units into something else, could be anything. But that unit will die at the end of combat if you do that. So it's very good to use on units that are about to die, to try and turn them into a dragon or something like that. And snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. I think first though, we're going to cast Degenerate. Degenerate gives the unit 60% weakness to all damage types. Hopefully make it a bit easier for us to kill this guy. And I think we'll send in the Feathered Serpent first to take the first hit. Can we get him? Nope. Taking the munch at us. Okay, um... Let's use Nourishing Meal on our Eagles. Gives them a bit more... Raise their max hit points a little bit. Gives them a bit more morale. Then they can have a go as well. Hit him. Oh, lucky. So, yep. That didn't work, lucky for him. Um, send in our apprentices. They can um, yep, pour on fire. It'll go down eventually, we'll kill him in the end. And the pony rider can come and guard Ellie here, who's vulnerable, she just cast a spell. Let's see what Team Snake is gonna do. Okay, coming in, and once again, lucky keeps my poor eagle rider alive. Yep, he survived, I think he's alive back there. Oh. Right, now, now, our poor apprentice here has one hit point left, just about managed to survive. This is the perfect time to try out Unstable Transformation. 
see what we get. Doggies. <laughs> Very useful. Thank you, Unstable Transformation. Oh well, they were going to die anyway. Um, keep trying to hit the warg. The, oh, the glutton we can do. Oh, he ate him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> bye bye, Waves for Eagle. Right, now hopefully, if we kill the glutton, the eagle will come back out again. Should do. That is assuming the glutton doesn't just kill everybody. <laughs> See him cleaning his teeth out. The pony man will save you. Come on, Mr. Pony Man, get him. Aha! And our eagle was returns kind of unscathed. <laughs> Dripping with goop. <laughs> and I'll send the blues brew brother forwards. Try and distract the matriarch. The next one guard. And yep. It's the end of us. Okay. What you gonna do now? Kill my brew. Okay, and you kill my doggies. No. Okay. Now, just for fun, let's cast on Sable Transformation again. Whatever. Go on, Mr. Eagle, what are we going to get? Yay! <laughs> it's a red dragon. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. So, I think that means I've won. Bye. <laughs> Munch. And send this guy over here. Kill the, uh, kill this thing. Can Ali finish him off? Oh, no, Ali's, um, can't move. So that's the thing. It could be anything. It could be a doggy. It could be a red dragon. Who knows? This time, you're lucky and we have a red dragon. And I think that's pretty much victory for me. Bye-bye. And bye-bye, Mr. Dragon. You served me well. And the dwelling is mine. With, well, <laughs> not exactly the greatest military victory in history, but I did it. Absorb this now. So, in a few turns, it'll be under my control. I'll be able to make reed serpents and naga slithers, naga guardians, who are the other type of unit, they're pikemen, uh, my own matriarchs, my own gluttons, brilliant. You can see here the seal, capture that, find, achieve victory and ascend to godhood. So, I hope this gave you all a good impression of the Golden Realms. All these new features and things will be available in random maps and in the campaign that comes with the expansion. See you next time.